Grace to you and peace, and welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church of Deerfield online. We find ourselves on the second Sunday of Advent, and this morning we're blessed to have at the Advent wreath in their own home, the Keeney family, Jeff and Jenny and Trevor and Evelyn. I hope that you will read along and listen as they light the candles and that you will light candles at your own table and remember that we are making our way one candle at a time through the darkness to the ever brightening glow of God's love as it comes to us in the incarnation of Jesus, born a baby in Bethlehem. I wanna also remind you that today is a service of communion and because we are sharing communion virtually, you'll want to make a little trip around and make sure that you've got bread and cup to share with everyone. Now today at our house, we didn't have any bread, so I got Christmas tree cupcakes, and maybe that's the best that you can do. And maybe it's not so bad. At any rate, we'll be looking for something that we can break and share together and receive the body of Christ as we share Christ's love for us. So I invite you to prepare yourselves for worship as we share the Advent candle lighting. Hi, we're the Keenies, and we're here in our home, and we're inviting you to gather around your Advent wreath to join us in the Advent candle lighting as we worship together gathered online. Let's read aloud. Watch and wait for Christ's coming. Light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. We light this candle in hope. And we light this candle for peace. Hear God's promise of peace from Isaiah 11, 1 through 10. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness, the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the, of the ass, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On the day the root Jesse shall stand as a signal to the people, the nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Let us pray. Faithful God, you are at work to restore all of creation in its intended harmony. Give us your shalom that we may be reconciled to all enemies in the peace that passes all understanding through Christ Jesus our Lord. God of promise, God of hope, into our darkness come. Amen. The Advent calendar is like the way to our celebration of Christ coming to the Lord. It's great to, to wait and hope for Christ together with you.
I think the angel Gabriel was right on. Peace is about a way we live and a harmony with the world and the people we live with. But I do think about those first shepherds who heard from the angel Gabriel the very first time. Do you remember what the Bible says? It doesn't say they found peace. They were frightened. And yet, the angel Gabriel said, relax, it's okay because God has sent me and I come to tell you about the Prince of Peace peace. Baby Jesus is more than a baby and more than a savior. Baby Jesus is the prince of peace. Someone who has the ability to bring a calm in our lives even when the world is a little crazy. So this Christmas, I hope that you will find some peace in your life and that you know that Jesus, that God, wants to offer you peace and calm. And no matter what fears you, no matter what scares you, God is with you, offering you his peace. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for the peace you offer. Help us to be confident that in you we find peace. Amen. Have a great Sunday. Our scripture lessons today take us into the mystery of what it means that God's love comes down to us. Listen as we begin in the Gospel of John, a familiar text that you'll hear again on Christmas Eve. Listen for God's word to you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. Listen also to the hope of our faith from John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but have life that lasts. And now we turn to a passage that is really known most at Easter from Luke, the 24th chapter. It's a time when two of the disciples are walking down the Emmaus Road sadly, missing their Lord, sorting out what happened in the crucifixion. Alongside them comes a stranger, one they don't recognize, but it is the Lord. Step by step, they walk together and talk about the scripture, and Jesus unfolds for them all the ways in which God had been planning and giving love through the centuries and through the words of Scripture. They come to the disciples' home, and he's about ready to walk down the road without them, and they invite him in for the meal. And then our text begins. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they said, and they recognized him, and then he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, 
Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the others. And they were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told them what had happened in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Lord, please be in the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts. You who are our strength and our only redeemer. Amen. She lay in a nursing home bed in her 97th year. The COVID close over the last several months had left her in deep isolation. There hadn't been many visitors before then either. The nursing staff, the housekeepers, along with the occasional doctor, were the only human contact that she'd had in many months. And her days, this old woman in her bed, were coming to an end. What are you singing? She asked the woman mopping the floor around her bed where she laid. It was a hymn. Tis a gift to be simple, tis a gift to be free. Would you sing louder, the woman in the bed asked. And the housekeeper did. And then it was another. Is there a song you'd like to hear, she asked. It was, How Great Thou Art. But she didn't know that one. So she sang, Jesus loves me, this I know. And the woman in the bed said, yes, that's the one. Somewhere in the night, that woman in the bed gave her last breath. She was gone by morning. I think the housekeeper is still there in the building, mopping, singing songs. She's been there for people for a long time. And for this woman in ways that being close brought God close. I tell you this story because as we enter more deeply into the time of Advent, I want to sing into your heart a beautiful word, a beautiful grace that is the theological term for what we Christians celebrate at Christmas. Do you know the word that sums up Jesus, light of the world, come down as a fleshy baby to lay in a manger of straw somewhere in Bethlehem 20 centuries ago? Do you know the single word for that experience? Do you know the word for that? Yes, you might say nativity, or you might just say Christmas, or you might say it's the first Noel, but it is also this word, incarnation. You know at least parts of this word, what it means. Its center part, carn, in incarnation, appears also in our carnivore, right? And you know a carnivore is a meat eater, right? And then you can deduce, even if you don't know Latin, that incarnation is an active noun of process. Something is entered into. Something is embodied in Meat, shall we say, or the more beautiful word, in flesh. Something is embodied in flesh, and the process is not one time, but ongoing. Incarnation, it is the enfleshment, the embodiment of God in human flesh. God become meat, so to speak. At Advent, we anticipate, and at Christmas, we celebrate, not just a baby in a manger, but the mystery within it of God's incarnation. You know, it wasn't just the cleaning lady in the nursing room with that aged woman. It wasn't just the two of them. It was love come down from God's heart 
to keep her company. And the cleaning lady held the cup of love that was God's, the cup of love that God wanted to share with that dying woman. According to the angels, according to the hearts that have to tell it and have felt it for these 2,000 years now, according to them, the God of the universe who speaks into life and into light, billions of galaxies of stars and every flesh of every kind, that God brought more than a word but also brought himself into our company. The incarnation, the enfleshment, the embodiment of God into human history is thought to be poppycock by many, many people. But for those who dare to hope at the evidence and the promise of Christmas, that God's love comes down to keep us company in this material world, here on this earth, for those... The world is changed forever. For those of you who doubt it, I have no evidence, nothing to persuade you otherwise. I have no incontrovertible fact or, thank heavens, a poll. I can only say to you, doubt your doubts. My dad wanted nothing to do with Christianity or religion for most of my childhood. He was a scientist, after all. His work was to measure and weigh and combine chemicals and to invent materials that withstood air and space flight. He found that most things could be explained. And if they couldn't be explained, it was simply, he surmised, because no one had yet discovered the equation or the combination that unlocked what we thought of as mystery. He had never seen God. And he had never seen or felt need for God. Until. Until his oldest daughter ran away from home until he lost his job and his home and his family's security. And he found himself questioning himself in a tiny town in Wyoming with no one around him educated enough to keep up with his conversation besides the itinerant Methodist pastor named Ted. Ted who made his way to my mother's church every Sunday afternoon because he did, after all, preach at the Methodist church in Basin in the morning. And then, after church, every Sunday, somehow he also made his way to my dad, a man who had lost everything. My dad and Ted would talk and fuss out together the impossible possibility that there was a God who not only loved the world, but loved my dad. A God who was, Ted said, woven into every material thing and every motion that could ever be measured or weighed in this world. And my dad, who at especially at Christmas, was famous for summing up the whole Christmas season in two words, bah humbug, started opening to the idea of God's love. And I think he saw that first in a pastor named Ted. It was an opening. (laughs) And the truth is that an opening is all God ever needs in any heart. God sticks his toe into the opening, and in my father into the opening that Pastor Ted was helping him to unlock, in my dad's heart and in his mind. And we, his family, could all see the miracle. There was a love that was coming down, not just to the whole world, but also to my dad. And my dad, scholar that he was, took after him like a bloodhound, 
Suddenly, he was reading everything, including the Bible, talking to rabbis and preachers, and even becoming a pain to his friend Atheus. He would rise early in the morning before the sun, and in the quiet, he began to know a presence. There was an extra chair in his book-laden study, where I swear Jesus would hold court and help my father doubt his doubts. But let me let you catch up. This is what the incarnation really is. Yes, at first God shows up meat, enfleshed, a baby Palestinian boy laying in a manger. But it is also an amazing game-changing truth of God's power and will to show up in all the material world, in pastors named Ted, and housekeepers that sing hymns while they mop, and even rocks and oceans, and people I have never met, but whom you know, who make it all clear, and who make you suspect, at least, that there is someone else there is someone here in this universe that is not just another human being and not just another limited love, but origin love. The love that every other love emanates from, that every heart needs. A love that has come down to our level to love us and to keep loving us. The incarnation does not mean that every material thing is somehow God, but rather that every material thing and every fleshly person is game for being a carrier, a bearer of God's presence and of God's love in a lonely world. <laughs> One more story to try to persuade you. Let me tell you about how love showed up in a bite of a cookie. <laughs> I have a box that is wrapped in Christmas paper, red and green. Inside the box is a hard as rock leftover piece of a ginger snap cookie. I have had this box and this bit of cookie for 41 years. Why on earth, you want to know? When my dear husband and I were just dating, one of our first occasions to be together was a 90-mile drive to take firewood to his mother's house in southern Minnesota. When I met her there for the first time, she served us tea. She was, after all, from Scotland, and her famous ginger snap cookies. I left a bit of cookie on the plate as we rose to leave. It had been sweet conversations, and I knew in my heart that while I wasn't yet sure that I would marry Joe, I was sure that I wanted this woman in my family. By that following Christmas, Joe and I were engaged, and in a Christmas package, I received the red-striped present, and enclosed, though it was about the size of a jewelry box, was not jewelry, but this leftover bite of cookie. What on earth? I called to ask her. And she said, I knew you were the one. I knew you were part of our family. I wanted you to know my love wrapped into you from the very beginning. You were loved. You were one of the family, even before you knew. Every year, until Olive passed away, she and I would send the cookie piece back and forth at Christmas as a way to say, I loved you then, I love you still. As we walk a little closer to Christmas this year, all I have to offer you is this mystery. This mystery that I know is more true than anything else I know. Love the big love that is God's love for all of us has made itself at home in our world and is not going away. 
Love came down at Christmas, and it always comes down when you know you need it, and sometimes even when you don't know you need it. Open your eyes. More importantly, open your heart. Don't just look to the heavens. Don't just watch the troubles. Watch the grocer clerk, the mail carrier, the email that comes to you, your own dog, like the bread and cup of the communion table. Everything that is made of flesh, everything made of material earth, is a vehicle through which God can come. Yes, God made a point of it in the infant Jesus way back in Bethlehem. But God didn't stop there, won't stop, ever. Incarnation, love comes down. Love embodies itself in the stuff of earth and means, means to do what it does best to the end of time, love. So watch for it. Pay attention. Love comes down. Let it in. Amen. sing out. 
my soul that I am yours. I am forever yours. I am Jesus, I am yours, I am yours, I am yours, Jesus, I We come to the table of communion and we discover that our Lord has done the very thing we've been talking about. Not a babe in the manger anymore, but he speaks over this bread to say, this is my body, he says. He says, this is my flesh, which is broken for you. So here we find it in a loaf of bread, the amazing promise of incarnation, of God being present in the stuff of earth. And you, you are invited to see, to taste, to take into your own flesh the strength of love from the God of love. By the host of this meal, I invite you. I invite you to your own table to see the table spread around the world of God's love for all of God's creation. Will you pray with me? God of mercy and grace, you came once a word spoken over the formless void, and light became light, a billion stars, moon and sun. You came in the very being of Jesus of Nazareth to walk dusty roads and lift heavy weights and to take the cross, arms outstretched and love pouring down and not only to die, but to rise against death for love's sake, to spread your forgiveness, to gift your power to your people, that love might grow in our world. And by your Holy Spirit, you empower all who trust you to become beings enfleshed by your spirit, to live your good, to bring your love. Gracious God, move across this bread and this cup that you might separate them from their common to their holy purpose. By your mercy, feed your people. Love your world. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus sat at table with his friends. And he took the bread into his hands and he gave thanks for it. And he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat this bread, remember me. In the same manner after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks for it, he gave it to his disciples saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. All of you, drink of it. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the children of God. Let us share the feast.
Did you feel the feast? Did you share it with those you love or just sense the love that is shared with you? So full of the Spirit, let us share prayer together. Will you pray with me? Holy Creator, bread of life, everlasting salvation, holy incarnation. A light shines in the night, and the night will not overcome it. In this meal, we have been replenished and strengthened. The light of your love rekindles our own flesh. Grant that we would be bold to carry this light into the world, that we would be bearers of your love. Lord, take the gift that you lend to us and help us to lend it to others. You are the power and the source that never leave us. Eternally, renewable, sustainable, thank you, God. Thank you, Christ. Thank you, Spirit. Send your people out to do your good. Amen. In the same way that God's love used and uses the material world to express God's love, we also can use the material world to do God's bidding and to bless the world. In this season, we're invited to consider how we give, what we give, and to whom. As you consider the Christmas season and the love that came down to us, so generously, so graciously, so full from the Lord. Let us each one consider what we've been given to share, what gifts were meant not just for our own blessing, but for others. The gifts that you make as an offering to this congregation are multiplied into service and education, into kindness and into justice seeking. The gifts that you give each week matter and the promises that you make about giving in your pledge matter too. Pay attention to the offering places that are open to you online and enact the generosity that you've seen and experienced from God. Comfort, comfort, no, my people. 
Christ returned after the resurrection, the next incarnation he introduced into the world was the church. Be, he said, my hands, my feet. Love, he said, the way that I have loved you. So this day and always, and especially here as we make our way to Christmas, let who you are in the flesh speak the love of God. And may the love of God, which also you need, fill your heart, give you hope, grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.